Hello class, welcome again. Here's, here's a demo of the next stage. Here's the cloth painting I started the other day for the first demo. Today we'll go a second stage on that. But first I wanted to say that I've put out my full palette this time uh, before I only had just a few colors. Uh, this time I put out all my colors that I usually use and that's because We'll get, there's a shot of the palette, okay? That's because my first block in is really kind of a quick grisaille. It's more of just get the values established, get the patterns, the light and dark patterns, get the drawing established. Uh, so if you remember the paper I gave you, it says go from low chroma to high chroma. So low chroma would be a grisaille. High chroma is a little more color. So now I've allowed, I'm, I'm giving myself a little more freedom. I'm, I can put more color. And if we think of that same paper of traditional oil painting, loose edge or loose to tight, uh, general to specific. And it, in line with that, you'll remember, I think I started with this brush here, kind of fuzzy, kind of old. And now I'm going to go a slightly smaller brush and a brush that I could get uh, maybe a little more finesse or subtleness in the edge quality. Uh, and maybe on the last stage of the painting, I would get a more refined brush where I could really get some, some nice detail or something on, on the final stages. Uh, but I think for now I've been, I've been actually, we were just joking about this, I've been dreaming of this brush thinking, yes, on my next stage I am going to paint with this brush. Sometimes I, I think ahead like that and I think, oh, on the next stage, I'm going to use such and such brush. So here we go. We're going to, uh, again, the first thing I do when I sit down to paint is I spend a, a number of minutes and I won't spend them in front of you, but I'll spend quite a bit of time looking at that and looking at this back and forth, back and forth before I even touch it with paint. I don't want to jump right in. I want to study it for a while and say, oh yeah, when I get to this spot, I could, I could make that a little warmer. When I get to this spot, I could refine that and, and define that reflected light in there just a little better. Oh, when I get to this spot, I could make that transition a little smoother from light to dark. Oh, when I get to this area, I, could, I, I never put in a cast shadow there, so I, I could do that. But then what I'm going to do is just pick out a spot to start working. Because in the, in the blocking stage, I was thinking of the overall painting, the overall values. But now I'm going to zero in, as remember, we get general to specific. I'll just start on maybe this fold and just work on that fold for a while. And then maybe I'll move to this fold and then maybe I'll move to this fold. Okay, so I'm going to narrow my focus a little bit and I am going to mix if I can. That, I'm looking at this shadow and I'm saying, what value is that? What color is that? Uh, and I'm going to start dark. On that particular shadow, I will start with the darkest part of that shadow. And I will, like our color mixing chart, I will try to mix what I think is pretty close approximation to that spot. I'm trying to mix the value. I'm trying to mix the color. And as I apply the paint, I'm also trying to closely observe the shape. So if, 
if I didn't get the shape quite right on my first go around, and I'm looking at that, and that's something that in that beginning, just study it phase before you even paint. If in that first little study phase, you, you say to yourself, the color's not quite right, the, the value's not quite right, maybe the shape's not right either. I, I can think about adjusting that shape too, improving the shape of that area at the same time. Well, that's why as we go to the next stage, we're thinking, it, we, we go slower and, and we're looking at just a smaller area because now we're really starting to say, let's improve the color, the value, the shape. So naturally, I think naturally, we can't go really fast. We need to slow it down a little bit and look at just this particular area. Need to warm that up a little and that there's a reflected light right in the middle of this shape. It's a little bit lighter because it's a reflected light and it's in my mind in my eye what I see is it's just slightly warmer so I've warmed up that sorry put a little tiny bit of burnt sienna some yellow oxide seems a little too light for that in value for that reflected light area. Knock it down just a little bit. Kind of makes me wonder why why does it get warm in there it's in the shadow we usually think of shadows as being cooler we could think about it maybe we figure out why it gets warm back in there when we would expect it to maybe get cool it does get cool in my mind what I think I'm seeing here is as this reflected light gets closer to this fold it does get lighter and it gets cooler for some reason back in that shadow warmer. Not sure exactly why. That's okay. So you can see maybe if Noah zooms in right here, it's warmer and this is a reflected light, but it's a little warmer and it gets cooler gradually as it gets out to this edge. Maybe right Along here, it gets even lighter. But if we look closely at this, it is very subtle, that change from that warm light in here. Maybe the camera can't pick it up, but it's slightly warmer, very gradual change to cooler over in here. It's still all just a very subtle area within within the uh, reflected light. Sorry, I'm just looking for a, a rag to. So, as you can see, rather than thinking about the whole thing, 
I've just spent the last few minutes just about that one fold. And I'll go to the fold right next to it. So, what I'll do is I'm, I'm just going to the area right next to where I just was. Oh, too much, too much of that color. Okay, let's see. There's a, so I kind of started right up in here. I'm going to continue that core shadow. Remember, core shadows kind of happen right, right where that light turns to dark. And here the core shadow starts out kind of sharp and it gets Uh, a little more diffused out in here. So I'm trying to think, okay, and maybe a little cooler. So it's a little more diffused out here. This core shadow comes down along here. There's a Kind of a wrinkle in the cloth and a little bit of that core shadow goes kind of up that way and it pretty much kind of comes down here and it kind of that core shadow becomes the very edge of this there I've got the core shadow. Now there's a reflected light, a little lighter. As that core shadow comes here. So That reflected light, well, I've got a little more white in here on the palette already. That reflected light gets just a little stronger right here. So, Kind of quiet sometimes when you paint. We don't have the radio on or Pandora. We don't have Max entertaining us with a funny story or Janie talking about maybe Star Trek quiet in the studio which is good sometimes maybe I move I'll move over to this I think that might help to just I'll move over now to the next shape that's close by there, kind of a continuation of where I, I started here, and I'll look at this core shadow that's strong, again, right kind of where the light turns to dark. Core shadow kind of comes straight down and then it 
gets kind of stronger and maybe cooler right here. And it's a little hard to see because my underpainting is kind of dark right there too. But as I add white to transition, that should show up a little more. I think I need a little burnt sienna, which is always a good answer. Hmm. Yes, that reflected light in there. Pretty skinny, pretty narrow along that edge. This will all probably look a little, well, it, it's gonna, gonna really come to life as I get those reflected lights in there. As this turns over, as this, I don't know if you can see it from where you are, but as this comes around this edge, this, this feels real warm to me, almost burnt sienna mixed in there. I don't know why, maybe it's reflecting this, this wood or something over here, but it, it feels warm to me. So as this transitions over here, feeling kind of warmish, so I put some burnt sienna in there. As this kind of rounds the corner, so to speak, in a fold. You know, every fold is more or less a value scale. It's dark here where the core shadow is. As this goes from here, the dark, over to this light edge, it's basically just a value scale, dark to light. So there's no harm or there, there's no reason not to practice value scales. It's like in piano and uh, the teacher makes you do scales or, or in uh, any instrument musical instrument and you know you're like oh drudgery I have to practice my scales well there's a reason for that is because it's really good for you to, to practice those scales so if you practice a value scale then when you get to a point a spot like this in in a painting and you have to transition from a dark to a light very smoothly and very gradually even if it's in a small space well you've practiced that and so it's uh, you're, you're you're not out of your element you can say okay I practice value scales I think I know how to transition from this dark to this light I don't I can do that I've practiced it before so here's Here's a good, honest question. Who of us have practiced our value scales recently? Go ahead and raise your hand. Well, I, I can't raise my hand because I haven't actually practiced my value scales, just doing a value scale. But here, I'm just noticing something else. Look at the, if we can get the camera in here. Look at this, look at this fold. Yeah, I think we can see it in the camera. Look how warm this is on this side. We get a core shadow, look how cool it is on this side. So here's the core shadow, the darkest spot on this fold. It gets light over here, but it's really warm. It gets light over here, but it's really cool. Yeah, we can see that. See how warm that is right on this edge? And how cool it is right in here. Especially the camera really shows that it's cool. So those are, kind of fun but also important to get those warms and cools to get those transitions it will that's 20 
Okay, we're at about 20 minutes. My my uh, DP, my director of photography and cinematographer and painting partner and studio assistant and my son, Noah, says we're at 20 minutes. So I'll try and wrap this up because I know that's a long time to watch someone else paint. It's like watching grass grow, right? Let me just get this last little reflected light kind of put in there quickly. And then we'll just discuss here. A little bit of reflected light. And just a little bit of white. Maybe some little highlights. This gets really light in here. Let's see if I have any other really light spots. Oh, well, of course this. And here, okay. But what we're, just today's demonstration, 20 minutes, I've only worked on these little bits right here. But if you compare that to the rest of the painting, the rest of it feels like a block in. This area where I've been concentrating, working on, it's starting to feel a little bit three-dimensional. Like there, like there's some volume to those folds. And that's, that's the secret. On the next pass, I would just come back in and say, I'm just going to work on that little fold again, but I'm just going to concentrate on just that area or just this area or just this area one at a time until I get the whole thing done. Hopefully you can see a little bit of how that's more developed and a little improved. So signing off, happy painting, good luck.